Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Hope all is well. This is an important formula, an important uh, process that we can all apply to our lives. That uh, that I I think I'd like to hope. Zat Hashem, I, I have trust in God that this will that this could hasten the coming of Mashiach with this process, this this focus. And it's basically it is a a mindset that we can take with us when performing the will of God, when 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 doing mitzvahs, when doing good deeds, acts of kindness learning Torah, basically when we carry out the will of God in this world, there's a, a mindset to get into, to take, the, to t- to take God's will, to, to bring God's will into action even faster and in a more efficient and stronger way. So basically, to understand this, there's three general ideas, but we'll get into it. There are two, there, the two main ideas, and then we'll get into the third at the end. The, f- the, f- the first two ideas are, there's this idea of accepting Omah Hushman, Kabbalah's Omah Hushman, accepting God's reign over you. The next is accepting the mitzvahs, accepting the, re- the yoke of the mitzvahs, meaning accepting that God's commandments in the Torah, if you're Jewish, of course, this is the 613 commandments, and if you're non-Jewish, if you're a righteous Gentile, this is the seven laws of Noah. But basically, the idea the idea goes is that the second process, accepting all ma- all mitzvahs, means we accept that the mitzvahs we accept we accept the f- God's uh, commandments. We accept them. We 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 recognize God's authority in His mitzvahs. So, and then there's a third step that we'll get into that uh, we'll get into later on in the video. But it's it's it will take these next ones to even greater heights. So first, let us understand that. A person, when performing a, a commandment of, of, of the one above, of Hashem, so it's very important that before, that we have to accept Ol Malch Shemaim, we have to accept God as king over us before we even accept the mitzvahs. Meaning, as a prerequisite to perform a mitzvah properly, to really perform a mitzvah pr- properly, whatever it may be, like putting on tefillin or giving charity, a person has to first obviously have in mind and and. and just as a whole mental recognition that God is king over us. Because in order to properly connect to God through, through the Torah and mitzvahs, one has to recognize God's authority. If one doesn't recognize God's rule over them, they will not fully be able to, to bring out the, the full potential of this godly service that they've been put into this world to perform. For example, for example, if a person... Uh, does a commandment, whatever it may be, without accepting God's reign over them. Meaning, so then the next step is 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 accepting the, the 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 validity, the validity and the importance and God's commandments, how they apply to us, and we accept them. We accept that God is king. First step. Second step. We accept that God's commandments are divine and they are His will, and we have to perform them. It's two steps. Meaning, if a person just does the second step without the first step, there's a lack. There is a lacking and a missing piece there because I'll give you an example. Let's say someone puts on tefillin, but they don't accept God as king. So they are performing commandment. They are doing commandment. They are they are doing something good. Of course, they are bringing an aspect of the godly light, God, infinite godly light, into the world for sure because they're performing God's will. But if they don't accept God as king, there is something lacking. There is an unbelievable potential that is being missed. And furthermore, there is a there is a this person will definitely have a confusion going on within them, but that will will obviously hinder their divine service. Just the fact that they don't fully even accept God as king means that their whole outlook is is, is flawed. Of course, we still encourage people to f- perform commandments even if they don't fully uh, recognize God uh, God's re- existence and authority over them. Because we still want to, you know, a person has to learn to walk before they can run. So get them to do a mitzvah, get them to give charity, get them involved with learning Torah, even though they fully don't have the proper uh, intentions. But we hope that it will bring them to eventually get the full intentions. But nonetheless, a person who doesn't accept God as a king, but yet is doing commandments, their whole way of which they're doing these positive commandments are lacking. So a person has to first accept God as king. Because... Let's say you're just doing an action, but you don't fully accept God as king. So you're just doing physical actions. Yes, it has a godly effect. But from your perspective, you're just doing actions. 
But if you accept God as king, you say, okay, Hashem is in charge. Hashem is, I accept God's reign over me. God is, is the, is, is the all powerful. Not only is he all powerful, but he's all involved every single moment. He's the one who created me. He's, he's, he's completely involved with each and every moment. So therefore, I accept him as king, and therefore, I accept his commandments as, 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 as a responsibility. Meaning, I accept God's mitzvahs. So then, now that I'm putting on film, now, okay, I'm doing God's will. I'm doing what God wants. So I'm not just doing physical actions. I'm doing God's will, which is the channel, which is the, the, the manner in which the divine light comes into the world. God, the whole purpose in which as to why God created the world is because he wanted a dira batachtoinim. He wanted a dwelling place in the lower realms. What does this mean? God wanted to create a place which is so physical, so where godly light is so hidden that a person could even make the mistake to not be aware of God and not believe in God. A person could go against God's will. That is only possible because we're living in a physical world where God hides himself. It is in that place that God gave the Torah, which he reveals himself in the Torah and gives it to us, the Jewish people. And also he gives the seven laws of Noah to the righteous Gentiles and the, all their details. And it is specifically Davka, specifically in this physical world where God is so hidden that he wants us to, to follow his commandments and then in turn make the world a divine place where God could be open and revealed. Meaning, yes, it's true. Meaning, yes, it's true that this is the world in which God is the most hidden. There's much, there's infinite realms above us, infinite spiritual worlds, so to speak, that God also created. That in those worlds, those worlds are some, some, of, some of those worlds, that is where our souls may go after we pass away. There's guard, the Garden of Eden, Gan Eden, partly, you know, heaven, so to speak. There's the angels and different spiritual entities that are there and there's there but they experience a tr tremendous divine revelation so this physical world that we're living in the fact that god is hidden is only at first glance the only reason why god, god hides himself at first is to give us free will so we could fulfill the torah and by fulfilling the torah and mitzvahs we bring god's light into the world and then when god reveals himself in this world this physical world it will be a greater revelation than any of the worlds above of no comparison <laughs> So we see that this is the world that God is most hidden, but yet is the world where God will be most revealed. Meaning, the revelations that will take place in this world in the days of Mashiach will be far greater than even the highest levels of heaven. Which is the highest levels even of Atsilus, the world of Atsilus, which is even beyond the level of heaven, so to speak. But yet in this physical world, we will experience a divine revelation far greater than any of those realms. So now we've explained why we have to accept first God as king. And now, how do I prove to God that I accept him as king? Torah and mitzvahs. Torah commands. How do I prove? A, a, a child wants to prove to their parent that, they, that they're sorry. How do you prove you're sorry? So behave. So in a similar manner, by way of example, we want to prove. We say, God, you're king. Okay, how do we prove it? Prove it. Prove it that, prove it that, you, that you accept me as king. Oh, tefillin, mitzvahs, Torah. The way we prove to God that we accept Him as King is by doing Torah and mitzvahs. Take it a step further. This is where the third step comes in. And this is important. So if you can focus, because this three-step process is a serious formula that, that, that can have a tremendous effect if, if practiced and on each and every one of our lives and not the, on the world at large. This third process is how we take these two steps, tie them together, and bring down an even higher light. So my friends, the way we can take things to greater heights is by doing these two steps, first accepting God as king and, and then accepting his commandments, but we do it with joy. That is how we take it to an even greater level. Because while it is absolutely unbelievable to accept God as king and then accept his commandments as king, but it's even greater, infinitely greater to do it with joy. Because when you do it with joy, you have an energy with you. And you're more refined. When a person is happy, they're more refined, especially in spiritual matters. When a person is spiritual, doing spiritual activities, you know, serving God. When a person's serving God and they're doing it with joy, they're much more refined. They're much more in tune with God in this. And so too, it is an even greater way to prove to God that we accept Him as King. Because if we say, uh, uh, accept Him as King in a miserable way, so... Yes, we accept him as king, but we're we're still not fully on par with him and we're unrefined. But if we accept him as king with joy, we show that not only do we accept him as king, but we're excited to do it. And we give God an even greater pleasure in that sense. 
And not only that, but from our perspective, when a person is happy, everything flows much greater. And this relates also to 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 understanding. You know, the Rebbe Rishab explains that when a person is happy, a person is joyous, their intellect flows at a much 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 greater potency. They receive much more chokhmah, the divine light, through their intellect. So when a person is in a good mood, they'll be able to understand Torah much better. They'll be able to relate to God much better. Their prayer will be more powerful. So my friends, this formula should be practiced at all, at least once a day a person should, should focus on this idea, performing this, when saying the Shema Yisrael as well. A person should at least once a day take some time to focus on this, I accept God as King, I accept His mitzvahs as an obligation, as a responsibility, and even more as an opportunity. Mitzvahs, yes, they're a responsibility, yes, they're an obligation, but even deeper, they're an opportunity. And the third step tie it all together we do it with excitement with joy because when we do it with joy then it flows and we prove to god that we're excited to accept him as king and we access an incredibly high level we cause god a tremendous amount of pleasure so this 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 should be applied in our daily lives and this is something that's been taught all over Hasidus. this formula that i explained in this way is you know this is this is like a formula that 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 makes sense in order to to consciously organize these ideas, but this idea of accepting the Torah, the Torah and uh, first accepting God as King and then the mitzvahs, this is all over Hasidus, this is all over Torah everywhere, and the idea to do it with simcha is explained all over Hasidus as well that simcha joy joy allows everything to flow to a much greater degree. So how much more so when we apply these two beautiful ideas with the idea of joy, we get a, a combined, a tremendous effect. And the result is God willing to come to Mashiach immediately. So may Hashem bless you all. Please help share this video. We have to, we have to push this, we have to push this, this final push to get close, to, to bring Mashiach. We are at the footsteps. We are at the entrance of the days of Mashiach. Mashiach is arriving at any moment now, my friends. Let us take our service to God to the next level. And let's do it with excitement, with joy, and with trust that God's about to reveal Mashiach. May it be today. May Hashem bless you all. Please uh, let me know in the comments um, something good you did today, something that you, something it could be something nice you learned, anything, something positive that you'd like to share with me. Thank you, May Hashem bless you all.